What's up guys, we are back with another Cosmic Legions review and we're jumping into, well sort of, again, the Cosmic Legions Outpost Zaxius Wave. So we started this back in PowerCon season last year in, what, August? And we took a look at the Operative 83 and the Scourge figure because they were early releases. But we're getting into the actual wave itself with the Tusk Pilot, which is also known as the Red Jet. I am most excited about this figure in this entire wave, which is pretty crazy for me because this guy's just an army builder. Uh, so I'm really curious to check him out and see what's going on. Uh, everything about this figure kind of speaks to me because I already like a lot of these parts and this candy coated red paint is absolutely doing it for me. Now, he comes in our standard Cosmic Legion style packaging. So you got that, you know, sort of deluxe style box almost. You've got the window up front and window on the spine for, you know, accessories and the figure. You've got that hologrammy sort of picture on the front. One spine's gonna give you your bio, one spine's gonna give you the Zaxius write up, and then at the back of the box, as we've seen throughout these waves so far, is a growing list of cross cells. You got waves one, two, and now three there. So let's do it. Let's pull them out and take a look. And here we go, out of the package, our Tusk Pilot, the Red Jets, our army builder in this wave. And I say army builder because this guy is not a Legion builder, despite being very similar to, say, the Tusk Sentry or the Tusk Science Officer. You know, it's obviously very close to those in terms of idea, but it's not the same mix of parts. And this thing has maybe, maybe, one of my favorite paint jobs in like all of Legions. We had the Sphexians in wave one with that crazy color shifting paint. This like candy coated red armor this guy has is, well, it's doing it for me to say the least. So let's get started, see what this guy can do, see how he moves around. I do have him fully kitted out mostly. I don't have like the tubes or anything on him just yet because this is really the look. This isn't exactly a figure that I think is gonna be used a lot without the harness, without the pauldrons, because it really does sort of tie him together. So as far as moving him around, I wanted to show what he can do, but also what restrictions are kind of in place as a result of this armor, which probably not too surprising. So the head can look up really good. It can look down decently as well. It does have some tilt and it does have swivel obviously, but he's sort of sucked inside this harness, which still allows him decent range. If you take it off, he's obviously gonna have full mobility. The arms are gonna go out at the shoulders. And these are pretty similar to like the other Tusk figures in that once you get everything on, the arms are not as movable as if they, as if it wasn't on, right? He is more encumbered now, but he looks infinitely cooler this way. You can swivel. The little nubs here do sort of get in the way of these arms. You do have pretty good range on the elbows though because of the, the fabric pieces. Well, they're not fabric, but they're supposed to mimic fabric, right? And that's one of the big differences between the pilot and the other tusk figures so far. So you've got really good range there. You've got your swivel. You've got swiveling gauntlets. You've got swivel and hinge at the wrist. These are vertical hinges on the hands right now. Torso has really nice range. This is a this is a, an instance of the armor not impeding this figure, whereas it does on some of the other tusk figures. The sentry or the science officer, I can't remember which one, has a really hard time hunching forward because of that little medallion on its torso. You've got tilt side to side, you've got your rotation, all that fun stuff. Legs go out all the way, nothing in the way because of the fact that he has the pants on. So you kick forward really well also, kick backwards. You do have your thigh twist up there. Single jointed knees, but really nice range on these. Again, the pant armor combination is really doing it to allow better range. You can swivel them there. You've of course got swivel at the top of the ankle, you've got your rocker, and then you've got really nice hinges there also. So in general, I'm very happy with the way this guy works, with the way he moves. He does have some hindrances because of this armor, but at the end of the day, the good absolutely outweighs the, I'm not even gonna say bad, the slightly not as good. Now articulation aside, I think it's probably no surprise that my main interest for this figure is the visuals, which is, I don't know, 99% of my interest for legions in the first place. But this guy is a little bit different because I do think there is something a little bit extra about him. And in many ways, it's just one of the cooler looking figures we've gotten in a while in cosmic or mythic for me. There's something about this combination of parts and this color scheme, the, the color scheme and the paint job in particular, that really, really works here. The mix of the fabric parts with the armor, I think is a great place to start and differentiate this figure from the other Tusk figures that we've gotten. Not only is he not a Legion builder, in the sense that he is fully painted and is a little bit more of a complete figure. He looks tremendous. This is a great way to break him up. 
make him seem a little bit less bulky. He's not fully armored, but it also obviously allows for a little bit more articulation, and I think it just completes a look that goes more in line with a pilot than, you know, like a fully armored guard or whatever the other guys truly are. So this guy looks like he might actually be in a cockpit. The use of the Sligor torso uh, harness piece in particular, I think is very pilot-esque in conjunction with these pauldrons as well. I think absolutely completes the look. You can throw some tubes on this guy, which we'll talk about. I haven't done that yet, obviously, but there's a lot of stuff that goes on with this figure to make him stand out. And I've, I've already got a handful of these and I'm I'm concerned that I might need a handful more, but I'm really, really happy with this guy. The candy-coated armor paint job in particular, I think, is the high mark for this guy. The way this gloss, you know, shines under the right lighting. The intricate detail on the line work on all of the armor, that little hit of gunmetal gray. Even all of this paint work on the belt. I mean, the belt is fully painted. All the pouches, all the little bits and bobs and doodads, whatever that stuff actually is, all of it is painted, all of it is fully realized in that detail, and I'm really happy with the way he looks overall. Even the torso underneath the harness. You know, if you wanted a red tusk-style torso, you've got one here if you want to utilize that. And then he just looks bulky and beefy from the, the torso up. It really does look like he's in a flight suit, so it goes in line with the idea, the story that they're trying to build here, and what these guys are. And he does sort of look like, you know, he's sort of a no-nonsense guy. These guys look like they're a little bit special, like they're... Uh, like their backstory kind of implies. And then we do have a really solid head sculpt here. You know, I'm a big fan of these tusk heads to begin with. I like the style, I like the way they look. I am still confused on how the alien heads actually fit inside some of these or how these guys actually put these helmets on, but that's not that's not uh, either here nor there. And then of course you can still take the visor piece off and you've got a fully painted you know, set of innards in there for all the robo guts inside. So you've got that little blue uh, mono eye in there. Some of the, the piping and the tubing inside is painted. And then that guy just pops right back on. I'm really, really happy with this. It's weird that this kind of figure is the one I gravitated towards the most with this wave because I'm, I army build, but I don't go crazy with it. This guy has absolutely drawn my focus from the combination of parts. Again, the fabric and the armor works really, really well here. I'm very happy with that but it's everything else. The usage of parts, the combination of these specific pieces, that Sligor torso, the pauldrons, and this color scheme in the paint job in particular that I think is absolutely gonna make people regret if they decided for whatever reason to skip out on this guy. Now, as far as accessories goes, this guy has a pretty solid spread and kind of like a little bit of everything, really. We've already talked about the fact that he includes the, the set of pauldrons and the torso harness. So that's a few things right out the gate that you can use to change up his appearance but he also includes an extra head sculpt. This is the same thing, just like his original head, the helmeted one. This is the same thing that comes with the science officer from wave one, but of course this is painted up entirely differently. He's got this serious blue paint job that fades from sort of a light color to super dark on the top. It is obscured by the harness if you've got that on, but without it, you can see the full thing. And I think he looks really good. I'm very happy with this head sculpt. I liked it on the science officer, but I really like this color and the added detail here as well. He also includes a set of trigger finger hands. These are vertically hinged, so you get a set of gripping and a set of trigger finger hands. And then we've got the tube. So this guy right here, this back adapter, uh, pops in the back and you can use that as a point to secure the tubes. And these things can kind of go all over, like all of these points on the armor, on the belt, on the wrist. If you wanted to put them in a different spot, you can absolutely do that. I've just got them sort of wrapped around with the harness so they plug into the back here at the top and then you can sort of loop them around, which I kind of like. It looks more, you know, flight suity to me in that way, but I really like the options to be able to move those around. Granted, you also don't have to use them at all. And then he includes, you know, weapons and other, you know, quote unquote, true accessories. So you've got one of the, uh, the pistols here, and this is one we've seen before. It does have a little bit of paint on it on some of the rivets and the little finer detail. He does also include one of the, just one, one of the gauntlet uh, blasters. So this will pop into these holes here on the gauntlet. You only get one of these though. Uh, we do of course get the various little uh, adapters, the clear pegs that are you know ubiquitous now for Cosmic. So if you want to attach other stuff onto the wrists, you can pop those in there. He includes the assault rifle, 
which does have a similar paint job and paint detail accents as the, the handheld blaster, the, the single hand blaster. And then he also includes my favorite accessory still in Cosmic. He includes one of the little hologram projection doodads. And this is the uh, projection of Cosmerium. So you get like, you know, their, uh, their galaxy there. So I really like his spread. Again, it's kind of like one of everything. You get all of the high marks of what we've seen across Cosmic accessories thus far, including some other stuff that is very specific to this guy, like having those tubes, which we don't see a lot yet, and then this specific head sculpt, which we haven't seen tons of yet either, and certainly not in this color. So I'm really happy with the ability to change this guy up with the amount of accessories that we have here. So yeah, overall, I think it's pretty clear. I'm a big fan of this one, a big proponent of the Tusk Pilot for sure. I think if you're even remotely interested in some Tusk guys, this is probably the one to go with. It is, of course, not a Legion Builder, so it's a full price figure, but I think you're getting a full price figure out of this. Tons and tons of part options here from the fabric to the armor, the chest pieces, the pauldrons, the tubing, the different heads. I love, I love that unhelmeted head. The blue on that really pops in conjunction with this red armor. Comes with a lot of solid accessories beyond that, but it's all about this paint job and it's about this mix of parts. I've said it enough already. I think it's a really solid interpretation of a spacecraft pilot, of like a fighter pilot kind of guy. I think it works really well. It definitely looks like it pulled some influence from real world fighter pilots in some ways with the tubing, with the fabric versus the armor. And I think it just looks great. The colors, the paint job, the overall sheen, the luster on this guy. It's, it's tremendous, and I'm going to end up with probably too many. So that's going to do it for this look at the Cosmic Legion's Outpost Axius Tusk Pilot. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share, and until next time.